This video, we're going to be talking about three mindsets and the negative emotions they trigger. We're going to be talking about self-doubt, comparison, and perfectionism. So let's get right into it. The first mindset that we're going to talk about today is mindset. Before I get into it, let me let you guys know what we're doing. So Monday is for mindset. Tuesdays for temperament, Wednesdays walk with God Wednesdays, Thursdays temple Thursdays, Fridays family and funds day, um, Saturday is synergy day, that's creative day, and Sundays are strategy day. So every day I'm going to be doing a video, Lord willing, on those particular topics centered around mindset. And today we're going to be talking about self-doubt, comparison, and, and perfectionism. So let's get right to it. Let's, I'm going to define self-doubt, and I'm going to talk about the, the emotions they trigger, and we're going to really learn today. The first thing it says, self-doubt is a negative mindset characterized by a lack of confidence in oneself and one's abilities. It triggers feelings of insecurity, inadequacy, and uncertainty, often leading to anxiety, fear, and a reluctance to take risks <clears throat> excuse me, or pursue one's purpose. We see that God never intended for us to be in self-doubt. If we doubt God, we'll doubt ourselves. But when we truly believe that God is who he says he is, and that he will do what he said he will do, then it'll be hard for us to doubt ourselves because we know that God is just doesn't want us to doubt. He wants us to get out. It's hard to get out when you're in doubt. It's hard to be out in your purpose, out in the mission field, out wherever God wants you to be if you're in doubt. So it says self-doubt is a negative mindset <clears throat> Excuse me, characterized by a lack of confidence. So the main characteristic to self-doubt is a, a, a lack of confidence. Confidence is an amazing word. It's confide in something dense. God is the most dense, potent person in all of existence. He's dense. That means he's so compact. He is so founded. He is sure. His ingredients and who and who he is characteristically is so intact that there's no lack in him, right? And so if we confide in other dense things, dense things is another word for stupid things. If we start confiding in, and confide means to trust, if we begin to trust in dense things, stupid things, things that don't really go alongside our purpose, then we're going to find ourselves in self-doubt eventually. But if we have our confid or trust in God who is dense and he is full of what we need, then we'll never have confidence and we'll never doubt ourselves. But it says that self-doubt is a negative mindset characterized by a lack of confidence. That doesn't mean you don't have some confidence, but your confidence cannot be based upon anything outside of God. If your ultimate confidence is in something or someone else, what happens when what happens to you when that someone or something else doesn't come through? Then now you're not confident anymore, right? But when your confidence in God, you won't have no lack. The Bible says, count it all joy when you go through various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. And when patience had its perfect work, you will be perfect, complete, and lacking in nothing. In God right now, through that process, we lack nothing. So if we lack nothing in him, then we shouldn't lack confidence in ourselves. It says, <clears throat> self-doubt is a negative mindset characterized by a lack of confidence in oneself and one's abilities. It triggers. Now, this is what self-doubt triggers. It triggers feelings of insecurity. So if you insecure, it's because you doubt yourself. See, insecurity and inadequacy. Self-doubt begins to make you feel like you're inadequate to what to do what God wants you to do. So now you doubt yourself. So when God, for me, when God told me to write a book, I doubted myself. Because of past experiences in English, <laughs> Miss McCullough, my English, I didn't do too well in English. It's very interesting how you how you are attacked in the very area that you're the most gifted. Right? And so because I didn't do well in English and because I started as a kid a lot and because I didn't really I was an introvert. And I like to be around a lot of people like that. I was like, who's going to want to read what I got to say? And then when God was like, yo, I want you to start speaking. I really lacked confidence. I was like, I felt inadequate. I said, I don't have no degree, God. I don't, I don't have no, no credentials. And God told me as I got older, the reason why you have no degree and you have no credentials so that nobody can get the glory out of you but me. You can't point to your ORU degree. You can't point to the, the speakers bureaus you've been in. All that you can point to is me. And sometimes the reason why we doubt because we feel like we have to put more out. And when you put more out, then you start putting your confidence in what you put out versus the one who put you out there. And so oftentimes it, we, or we feel insecure and inadequate because we think that we have to have all these qualifications. And that's not necessarily true. But to also help with self-doubt, you also got to make sure you put something in. That means you got to be skillful. See, I'm not, I don't doubt my speaking ability because I worked at it. I don't doubt that God wants me to speak, but I can doubt my speaking if I don't put work in my speaking. 
So what I'm also telling you is you can have doubt uh, because you what you haven't put out. Because I speak often, because I have practice, then what I put out, I trust because ultimately my trust in the Holy Spirit speaking through me. All right. But but what I'm trying to say is that when you have self-doubt holistically or generally, it triggers feelings of insecurity, inadequacy and uncertainty. So when God puts you out there, there's no need to doubt because God is certain. I don't have to worry about if I'm certain about what the next year holds. I know who holds the next year. I don't. I mean, everybody, we went through what we went through in 2019, 2020. We all made it through. And so that just shows that as long as we know who's holding tomorrow, there's no need for me to be in sorrow. Right? But we see that self-doubt triggers insecurities, it triggers inadequacies, it triggers uncertainties. Then it says often leading to anxiety. So now we get into the deep, the deeper emotions that sprouts out from self-doubt, right? leading to anxiety. Now we're anxious wherever we are because we doubt ourselves. And because our confidence is not in God, now we really doubt. Also leading to fear. Now we're afraid to do what God wants us to do. You see how the enemy wars at us with self-doubt? If you doubt yourself, then out yourself. Put, put more output. Put more things into it so you can feel more confident in it. But if your self-doubt is ultimately at its foundational standpoint where you have nowhere to stand and you're not really willing to go where God wants to point you, then, man, you got to really begin to investigate why you doubt so much. It says, and reluctance to take risk or pursue one's purpose. So we see self-doubt gives a reluctancy to take risk and pursue one's purpose. Are you struggling with self-doubt today? What does God want you to put out, but you can't come out because you doubt? You got to be a person who's willing to go in that bout and fight and fight and put out what God wants you to put out, despite if anyone buys it, despite. Obedience is all you got to focus on. You don't got to worry about outcome. Just worry about obedience. God will take care of the outcome. Just obey if those fishermen never put that net out when Jesus said to cast your net and if if Peter and them was like but it's, and rooted themselves in their expertise ideologies cuz imagine how offensive it was for a teacher to tell a fisherman to put a net out. And so imagine if Peter got into pride. Peter was in some kind of pride. He was like, "Yo, we've been toiling, we've been we've been fishing all night, we ain't caught nothing." But he he fixed himself real quick but at your word See, at his word, we got to say, okay, I just gonna, I'm just going to obey you, God. If you tell me to go and do this, I'm going to do it. There's going to be no reluctancy because my confidence is in you. The next we're going to talk about is comparison. Comparison is a negative mindset where individuals constantly compare themselves to others, often resulting in feelings of jealousy, envy, and a sense of inferiority. It triggers a negative emotional response leading to low self-esteem, self-criticism, and a constant need for validation from others. You don't got to raise your hand, but how many people right now, you're struggling with this, especially on this platform, Instagram, or wherever you find yourself. It says comparison is a negative mindset. When you're constantly comparing yourself, man, you're burying yourself. Where individuals constantly compare themselves to others, when you constantly compare yourself horizontally, you will only grow at the level of where they are. So if I only compare my life horizontally, I'll only grow just a little bit above the person so I can be in pride or really at the person so I can feel accepted. So when you compare yourself horizontally, you're going to only measure up to how tall they are. But when you compare yourself vertically to the perfection of God and who he is, there's always room to grow. And you will always outgrow those people you once compared yourself to. When you compare yourself to who God sees you to be, you'll always grow. But comparison is a negative mindset where individuals constantly compare themselves to others. Who are these others? Who are these others that we compare ourselves to? See, it's crazy how we compare ourselves to people where we don't know all the information. We don't know if they sold their soul. We don't know what they had to do and bend over to do what they got to do to get where they got to go. Are you really willing to do everything everyone did to get where they are? If you don't know everything, there's no need for you to compare. You don't, comp comparing is coming over to pair. I'm coming over you to pair ourselves, to make ourselves equal to each other so I can feel validated. No, 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 we don't know. We don't know what everybody done did. Do you know how many preachers I done got envious of, <clears throat> jealous of, in my feelings about because they got huge platforms when I was younger and we went to the same schools. I went to ORU and watch all these people take off. Then God was like, you don't know what they had to take off to take off. Oh my goodness. You don't know what clothes they had to take off to take off. 
Hey, are you willing to do it? Are you willing to take off? And you know, you know me, huh? You know, I ain't willing to take off to take off. So God's route is not always the quickest. Most people who are taking these high roads had to cut corners. And so <clears throat> comparing themselves to others when often resulting in feelings of jealousy and envy. I forgot what those two mean. Jealousy means I'm jealous of you. Envy means I envy what you have. Jealousy is I want to be like you or I wish I was like you. Envy is I wish I had what you had. Yeah. So when you're comparing yourself, you setting yourself up to dark emotions like jealousy. There should be no one that you should want to be completely like. You should want to, you can glean from other people. You can learn from other people, but you shouldn't be trying to be like other people. Jealousy, I want to be like you. I want to do what you do. Jealous of that speaker. Jealous of that author. Jealousy of that creator. Jealous of that influencer. Jealousy of that engineer. Jealous of that coworker. Jealous, jealous, jealous. That's what comparison does. It leads to envy. Now you wish you had the wife they had, the husband. Like it's crazy when people talk to me <clears throat> and, they, and they're mad about, they're mad at their husband and their wife. I say, you know what? Hey, let's, let's, let's look at the percentages. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, marriage is work, but you don't know what's up under that marriage. That marriage. You don't know what's, you don't know, you don't know. You can't envy everything because everybody put their best foot forward when they're in public and you envy and you comparing your marriage to their marriage. Listen, do you know how many kids I counsel and the, and the, and the par parents I go to church with and I look at them and I be like, man, y'all look great going on that aisle together. But what I hear in my office, something totally different. So imagine me being jealous of, that's why me and my wife, we keep it real, man. Like we don't got time to try to advertise what we're not. That's why we fix it before we go. So, because one thing, I can't fake my face. If I'm mad at you, you know what I'm saying? You're going to feel it. You're going to see it. So why we deal with it, man? Because we don't got time. But comparison leads to resulting in feelings of jealousy, envy, and a sense of inferiority. So now, when you compare yourself to somebody, now you feel inferior to them. Or when you compare somebody else, yourself to somebody else, now you feel superior to them. And those are dark emotions. When you start feeling inferior or superior. That's bad. That's what comparison is dangerous. It said it triggers. Now it triggers more. It, 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 it triggers a negative emotional response. So now when you see that person you compare, you got a you got a negative. That's why it, anytime you naturally immediately trigger emotionally, investigate that emotion. It shows you something in your heart. Soon as you see someone and you feel a certain type of way, fix it. There's been plenty of people where I practice in my own life. I'm like, yo, if I feel a certain type of way, then man, I got to check my heart. Because am I jealous? Am I envious? Do I feel inferior? Do I feel superior? So anytime your emotions are triggered, you got to you gotta investigate it. Because it'll let you know, hey, you struggle with comparison or you struggle with self-doubt. That's what we're talking about. Mindsets that trigger certain emotions so that you can investigate and examine where you've been sitting your mind. And if you've been sitting your mind in doubt, then you'll you'll see you'll see insecurity, inadequacy, uncertainty, anxiety, fear, reluctancy sprout out all the time. Or when you begin to investigate where your mind has been sitting, you've been sitting and scrolling on Instagram, looking at people's pages, wishing you had what they had. And then when you see that person in the streets or you see that person in your media, a social media feed now sprouting outside of you is jealousy, envy, inferiority. All these negative responses, man, that's something you got to think about. We all got to think about. And it can happen anytime based upon where your mind is sitting. Some of us, we will shift our mind to sit somewhere else. And we won't even know we shifted our mind. And then we find ourselves in doubt in, in comparison. It says it triggers a negative emotional response leading to low self-esteem. Here we go. Now you see that when you compare, we all compare. But we shouldn't fall into comparison. We shouldn't be a son of comparing. <laughs> we shouldn't be a child of comparing. I shouldn't be a son of comparing. Meaning that that I'm raised by my comparisons, right? No, when you when, all of us compare, but we should be comparing for growth. Like when I look at other people and they're gifted, some I don't envy them, I don't jealous of them. I learn from them. Okay, well, babe, they, they talk like that. They, ooh, 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 then I'm a f learn from them, right? But the reason why we gotta stop comparing is because it will lead to low self-esteem. Then when you, no matter how much energy, no matter what you do, you will never measure up to them. Now you deep and dark and low self-esteem and self-criticism. Now you're criticizing yourself 
and a constant need for validation from others. Nobody got time to constantly look for validation. Because when you're a slave to being accepted, then you'll always be in prison to their rejection. If you live for people's acceptance, you'll die from their rejection. So that's why you can't compare, man. You got to focus on comparing yourself today, who you was yesterday, and then try to reach the person that you need to be tomorrow and focus on those comparisons. That's what you compare. First, you compare yourself to God and say, God, you know, and you, it humbles you. But it, then it sprouts a level of, of, of habit in you that's like, yo, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get better so God can be even more glorified. And you compare yourself to who you was yesterday. Am I further up the road than who I was yesterday? If you're the same person that you was a year ago, then comparison is, is your enemy. Or something else. You, None of us should be the same person we was a month ago. We shouldn't even be the same person we was a day ago. Every day gives you intel to remove the hell. <laughs> Every day gives you intel to, to do well. And to get better, right? So self-doubt says, self-doubt is a narrative, negative mindset characterized by a lack of confidence in oneself and one's abilities. It triggers feelings of insecure. Oh boy, look at that stutter. And see, see, it's still a work in progress. It triggers feelings of insecurity, inadequacy. That stutter came because I was speeding. That's all it was. Sometimes you got to slow down, coach. You were speeding, coach. You were speeding through that word. You trying to get through that paragraph. And that's, you hit that speed bump of stuttering. Man, you had to slow down. So let me slow down. It triggers feelings of insecurity, inadequacy, and uncertainty, often leading to anxiety, fear, and a reluctance to take risk on one's purpose, right? We say comparison is a negative mindset where individuals constantly compare themselves to others. Often result see, it's nothing wrong with, with comparing skill, but don't compare yourself. Comparing skill is fun. Okay, oh, you good at that? How can I learn from that? But I'm not going to compare myself. And what I mean by comparing myself, nothing really wrong with seeing someone who have uh, intangible traits that you want to adopt or whatever. But that's skill. But you don't want to compare yourself. And then it leads to this. It says where individuals constantly compare themselves to others, often resulting in feelings of jealousy, envy and a sense of inferiority. It triggers a negative emotional response leading to low self-esteem, self-criticism and a constant need. For validation from others. You don't want to be in a place where you have to constantly feel validated by others. Man, you don't want that. Because what if nobody say anything? Now you just left to yourself. Now, perfectionism and we're done. And next Tuesday, I have a, I have about 20 items that I got here. That we're going to talk about throughout these Tuesdays. Lord willing. Perfectionism is a big one. This one I struggled with big time. When I was about a few years ago. And I have to be on guard with. Perfectionism is a negative mindset. Characterized by setting excessively high standards for oneself excessively high standards for oneself and striving for flawlessness in every aspect of life that already feels heavy it triggers feelings of stress anxiety and self-criticism as perfectionists often believe that anything less than perfection is a failure this mindset can lead to a fear of failure, procrastination, and a constant sense of dissatisfaction. Woo-wee! How many perfections I got out there? You don't got to raise your hand. Don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. So perfection is a negative mindset characterized by setting excessively high standards. Do you know, like, like there are certain standards you'll never reach. We'll never be perfect. So why strive for perfection? We've already messed up perfection. <laughs> we'll, we'll never be perfect. That, that's done. Jesus took that. Jesus was perfect so that we, Jesus took on perfection so that we can take on progression. That's a word. Jesus took on perfection, fulfilled perfection so that we'll have the opportunity at progression. It's progressionism, not perfectionism that we should endeavor to pursue. It's characterized by excessively high standards for oneself and striving for flawlessness in every... Do you know how impossible it is to be flawless 
Imagine me taking a flawlessness mentality in my marriage. And then when I actually have a, and I make a mistake, then all of a sudden now I'm, I'm, I'm really beating up on myself. See, one of the cons of perfectionism, one of the issues with perfectionism is that you end up beating up on yourself. Not only did you beat up on yourself to get to a place, quote unquote, then when you never achieved that place, now you're beating yourself down again. That's not what God wants. He wants progression, celebrating growth, elevating in growth. It says setting excessively high standards for oneself and striving for flawlessness in every aspect of life. That's impossible. That's a weight that we shouldn't be carrying. It triggers feelings. Now, here are the feelings that that perfectionism triggers. It triggers feelings of stress and anxiety and self-criticism. I've been guilty of that, and I know a lot of you all have as well. Now you're stressing out because now, now you're wearing yourself. Do you know perfectionism wears the body out? Because now you're stressing for something that you can't achieve. Your body's like, yo, fam, we ain't, we can't do that. <laughs> your lungs, your heart, your mind, all, all of you. Your family's like, yo, where are we going, man? Like this ain't, we can't achieve that. We can't achieve that level. We can achieve high success, but not excessively high. We got to be realistic and set realistic expectations of what we're able to do. Uh, as perfectionists often believe that anything less than perfection is a failure. That, that, that'll ruin you. You're going to fail. Imagine if me stop doing business, stop doing ministry, stop writing books because the book didn't come out perfect. Nothing comes out perfect. That's the beauty. That's the beauty of imperfection. How God can create something perfect out of imperfection. These me I don't stutter how many times, but the message still came out perfectly. Like, like nothing comes out perfect, but it comes out perfectly. Big difference. Perfectly means it did its job. Perfect means you you were trying to force it to do it a job higher than what it was capable of. This mindset can lead to a fear of failure procrastination, and a constant sense of dissatisfaction. Now you're never happy. You're never satisfied. Now people don't want to be around you because now you're expecting perfection out of them. That's not fair to them. Just because you want to pursue perfectionism and being a perfection doesn't mean you should. That 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 destroys the people around you because now when little Johnny want to pack up his clothes, his clothes ain't color coded. You know, like, like everything has to be so perfect for you to be at ease. That's dangerous, family. You don't want that. So today we talked about self-doubt and the feelings it triggered. We talked about comparison, the feelings it triggered. We talked about perfectionism and the, and the feelings it triggered. And I want you guys to start thinking about if any one of those mindsets pertain to you, I want you to begin to think about why. Because I talked about on our fundamentals coaching call today, we talked about um, how belief and how um, the reason why we can't receive it because we don't believe it. The reason why we don't receive from God is because we don't believe God. Why would God, God's not going to force nothing in a closed fist. And if you don't really believe in, if your spiritual health is not strong, then these mental areas are going to be weak. They're going to be diseased. They're not going to be healthy. And so you got to look at your spirit like, man, what do I really believe? Do I really believe in God? I really believe that, that he created me for such a time as this to do great works, really do exploits. Do I really believe in my purpose and my purpose can impact people? Do I really believe that, that th my business can scale? Do I really believe that I can, that I can create this? Do I really believe you will never receive it until you believe it. That goes both ways. You have to receive it to believe it to receive it. You have to receive it. You have to believe it. Hold on. You have to receive it to believe it. Hold on. You got to believe it to receive it to receive it. There we go. You have to believe it. <clears throat> you have to believe in God. You have to believe in yourself in order to receive what God wants you to have and then and to receive what you desire to have in your life. So I pray this video is a blessing to you. We got something out of it. If you need support with your mindset and you're like, yo, coach, I need some help. There you go. Message me today, mindset. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, comment below mindset and I'll send you a link to see where you are, to see how we can get you to a place where you can pursue your purpose. The number one thing hindering high fulfillment in our purposes is our mind. How can we receive it if we don't believe it? Love you. I got to go. I don't, I don't, I don't labored an hour. And 30 minutes on the other side on a Zoom call. And I labored. I don't even know how long I've been laboring here. Uh, that's right, my brother. Receive, believe, achieve. That There we go. Thank you, brother. You helped me out. Receive, believe, or achieve. Believe, receive, achieve. There you go. Thank you, my brother. You got to believe it to receive it.
to achieve it. Love y'all. Catch you next time. Peace.